Originally, I was just gonna look at, like, what reunification, th uh, like, camps were, and I was, like, just to help boost this poor girl, because this is what she's going through right now. But, uh, I seem to have fallen down a rabbit hole. Family assets fighting for children's rights. <sighs> Why do they all look like this? William Burnett, MD, a graduate of Holy Cross College. Summa cum laude, and Harvard Medical School is a professor, um, Etermis at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. He is board certified in general psychiatry, child psychiatry, and forensic psychiatry. As an expert in forensic psychiatry, Mr. B uh, Burnett has testified about 300 times in 24 states. Maybe you should recheck all those tests. Mrs. Dr. Burnett has written professional articles and book chapters in a variety of subjects, including group and individual therapy with children and adolescents, humor in psychotherapy, forensics, child psychiatry, child maltreatment. Oh, what was that thing we looked at before? True and false allegations of abuse. Child maltreatment, true and false allegations of abuse. No, it's cum. I'm going to pronounce it as cum. Satanic ritual abuse. Huh? What? Huh? Excuse me? What? Reincarnation? Child custody and visitation, parental alienation, parental alienation, DSM-5 and ICD-11, which was published in 2010. Dr. Burnett and his colleagues edited Parental Alienation, the Handbook for Mental Health and Legal Professionals. You mean the thing that's not, like, that, that is not, is lacking scientific validity and reliability? That thing? Okay. He's the founder and first president of the Parental Alienation Study Group. <sighs> Misinformation or fake news about parental alienation. Ooh. Huh? This is Dr. Bill Burnett, and I'm going to be talking today about misinformation. Ooh, okay. And what I'm referring to is misinformation or false information or fake news about parental alienation. This happens Fake a news! Lot. Misinformation happens a lot in journal articles, in magazines, in newspapers, and in presentations that are made. And I think that people who are interested in this topic and the topic of parental alienation need to be aware that a lot of things that you see or that you read are not correct. They're fake. And I'm going to give you three or four examples of that. I mean, that sounds, I think I agree with that so far. A lot of what I've seen from this camp shit and a lot of what I've seen from like these, uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the website, wherever the fuck, this shit and like this bitch. Like, all seems, this nonsense seems pretty fake to me. Right now. So here's one. This was in a book that was published by the American Psychiatric, I'm sorry, the American Psychological Association a year or so ago. And this is what it said. The American Psychological Association is the one lying to you. Okay, noted. Go on. A year or so ago. And this is what it said that parental alienation theory assumes that a child's strong alignment with one parent while rejecting a relationship with the other parent is without legitimate justification. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong with it is that it says that we are interested in parental alienation, that we assume that the child's rejection is without justification. And nobody assumes that. We do an investigation, we collect information, we find out information from the child and from other people. So nobody would assume that just because the child rejects a parent, that it's because of parental alienation. Well, we just know that that's not true, based on this lady and her 100% success rate, and based off of the, this video, and based off of this video about the reunification camp, and this video about this girl who is being, who has people trying to force her to go to reunification camp with her abusive father. So 
maybe you should at least acknowledge that criticism, jackass. Like, there are people 100% making those assumptions. Specifically, this lady here. This, 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 what's her name? Lida, Linda, Linda Godalib. Specifically, this lady, this one right here, is specifically doing that. So maybe, Mr. Doctor Person, you should- Yeah, they're both named Linda. They're just spelled different. Maybe, maybe, you should acknowledge that that criticism is accurate and take it on board and tell people that no, this is not an assumption you should make. If you're doing this, you're applying our hypotheses incorrectly. All right, so they're not lying to you, first off. This isn't misinformation. All right, cool. Noted. Let's keep going. Here's another example. Th this was written in a book. The use of parental alienation is now considered inadmissible. This was in a book? Which book? <laughs> Where was this written? What do you mean, was in a book? Fuck you! The use of parental alienation is now considered inadmissible in a number of courts as it does not meet the established legal standard for the admissibility of expert testimony. So what's wrong with that? Well, it's totally false. It is false to say that the concept of parental alienation is not admissible in court. And in fact, there are hundreds of examples. In the recent book that we published called... Uh, was the book titled, like, Why It Shouldn't Be? Because that could be a statement about not what is fact, but a statement about how it ought to be treated. I think that's why he didn't list the book, right? Because if the book is saying that parental alienation is bullshit and here's why, and then it's in its conclusion it said this is why it's not admissible in court, it's meaning to say why it should not be, not that it isn't. I'm also not willing to grant that this guy is also not cherry picking, so tell me the book. Tell me the book. Give me the citation so I can look up to see what the book was actually saying, because I don't trust your interpretation of this one sentence. Admissible in court, and in fact there are hundreds of examples. In the recent book that we published called uh, Parental Alienation, Science and Law, the appendix has almost 1,200 cases in the United States in which parental alienation was presented and considered by courts. So what? It, if it's presented in court, it has to be... Okay. <sighs> if somebody brings up parental alienation in court, it needs to be considered. It has to be considered. That's the point. That's why you brought it up. Right? So the court has to consider it no matter what. And it's interesting that you're bringing that up, that it was brought up in court. You can bring up fucking anything, first off. Especially when it comes to this kind of a situation. You could absolutely bring it up. That means nothing. The court having to consider it also means nothing because the court is required to do so. So that also means nothing. And third off, he didn't give the conclusion. Did those courts accept it? Or did you cherry pick out 1,200, which is still a massively small fucking number of times? So, and where? Because like that kind of statistical information is going to... You, you have to actually anal uh, analyze where it's coming from and where it's taking place because you might have like one state who's like, yeah, gay conver conversion therapy is totally fine and literally everywhere else being like, fuck no. But if you cherry pick all of your information off of the one state that's allowing it, like, you know, little miss fucking 100% over here, if this is who you're getting your statistics from to show that it's effective, I think that you're probably full of shit. So it's really just false to say that it's not accepted in court. Here's another one. Somebody wrote this in an article. Somebody wrote this in an article. Anybody can write anything in an article. <laughs> Give me a source. What article? Who are they? Let me look them up. In these types of cases, Whenever a preferred parent speaks poorly about the rejected parent, it is viewed as an alienating behavior. Is that correct? Is it tr is true to say that any time a parent speaks badly about the other parent, that that's an example of an alienating behavior? 
Well, that's not true. That's not a correct statement. I mean, parents say negative things, unfortunate things about the other parent lots of times. It's very... Okay, and? If that's not the question. The question is, is in this practice, this is how this is treated. And we know that is the case because that's how it's presented. In the video, the, the, the video that I got from them describing what it is, it's structurally, it's a, it's a requirement of the theory or of the syndrome of, or of, it's something that is one parent is targeting the other, right? So that would be a requirement. Now, that doesn't mean, he, he's conflating an overarching behavior with one incident. It. So that's a, that's a fake information, that's misinformation. No, you're There's just bullshitting. More that actually got to the House of Representatives of the United States Congress. That there was a resolution being considered with the following phrase in it. Where Which resolution being considered? Where? When? Let me look up your fucking shit, dude. You're just pulling shit out of your ass. Oh my god. He gave me one reference one time at the very beginning. Solution being considered with the following phrase in it. Whereas scientifically unsound theories such as parental alienation syndrome, enmeshment, and some other things are frequently applied to reject parents' reports of abuse. So that, that phrase that parental alienation syndrome is a scientifically unsound theory that was about to be passed by the House of Representatives. But we intervened. I, I went and some other people went, talked to congressmen, wrote letters, contacted people, and that phrase was taken out. So that cool, so you're dangerous because that's not what a syndrome is, as Feline aptly put, which I will read again. A syndrome means that it must be present anyway at birth just maybe not expressed until a trigger event. Which means that you, yeah, basically you lobbied. Right. Great. Cool. Yikes. That just is an example of how serious this kind of misinformation can be if the actual House of Representatives could have passed a resolution with that phrase. Fortunately, it was removed. So what does all this mean? What it means is you have to be really careful about what you read. You can't believe everything that you read. If you're reading something or seeing in a meeting or a conference, something that doesn't seem to make sense, don't automatically believe it. Hey, that's the thing we're doing here. Thank you for approving me to be doing what I'm doing and shitting on you because you're garbage. You need to go back to the original source and see what, what was actually said in the beginning, because what you, you, you may be hearing misinformation. Thank you. Hi. Oh my this God, you are so welcome. And this guy's got like other videos too, right? Like, Dad's Divorce Live, Parental Alienation as a Medical Disorder, Dr. William Burnett. Oh, oh, a disorder. It's a disorder. Okay, you have fucking right. Uh, parental alienation in DCM uh, DCM five. Five factor model for identifi identification of parental alienation. Okay, five bucks. Five factor model. Do you guys think that the five factor model that he describes is going to necessitate? or debunk what he's saying down here. Like, do you think the model is going to include one parent talking shit on the other parent? Do you think it's going to include things um, like the scientific validity and how it's approached, et cetera, et cetera? Et cetera?